Ethernet over power line bridges featuring the Linksys PLS K400 kit with the PLE400 one port network adapter and the PLS400 four port network adapter. There are times when Wi-Fi technology does not provide the best solution. For example, it's generally best to locate your Wi-Fi router near the center of your house for best overall coverage. However, your broadband internet connection generally enters your home through one of its external walls through a DSL or cable TV interface. If you locate your Wi-Fi router there, the remote portions of your home will probably have trouble getting a good connection. Now, you could just install a broadband modem or a, a wired router and then string a long Ethernet cable into the center of your house leading to your Wi-Fi access point, but that could be ugly. I found a better solution that will work very well for most people. I use a pair of Powerline Ethernet adapters instead of that long, unsightly Ethernet cable. These clever devices can transmit and receive Ethernet data across the electrical power lines that are already embedded in the walls of your home or small office. And they generally deliver a better, more reliable connection than Wi-Fi. As an example, for our purposes today, I chose a pair of Powerline Ethernet adapters from Linksys. I purchased their PLS K400 kit for about a hundred American dollars at a local retailer. This kit consists of two of their most popular Powerline Ethernet adapters from a set of several mutually compatible devices that are available. Now, both of these devices claim a maximum throughput of about 200 megabits per second. By today's standard, that's fairly fast. It's faster than fast Ethernet, and it's 20 times as fast as standard Ethernet. However, it's not as fast as gigabit Ethernet. Now, it's really doubtful whether you'll really get uh, 200 megabits per second through these devices in the real world, because every home is wired differently, and most wiring circuits wind around obstacles and snake through walls and ceilings and then double back through breaker panels and etc. It's very difficult to predict the actual throughput that you can expect in your home, in your situation, until you test it. Nevertheless, even if only about 25% of the advertised 200 megabits per second is delivered, that's still 50 megabits per second, which is much faster than the average broadband internet connection. If that connection is reliable, and if you're using your power line ethernet uh, just to carry data to your internet connection, you're going to have excess capacity to spare. The two devices in my kit were one of two, the PLE 400 um, one port ethernet adapter and two of two, the PLS 400 Powerline AV four port ethernet adapter, which includes an ethernet switch, making four ethernet connectors available. My main internet connection comes from a DSL interface in a downstairs bedroom. I have a DSL modem, and a wired Ethernet router there. I use the Cisco RV42 VPN router, and I have found it to be a reliable, fast, powerful, uh, great router loaded with important extra remote access and security features, and it's described elsewhere here at AskMrWizard.com. You can read about it. I plugged the smaller single port device, this one, into a standard 115 volt AC power outlet near that Cisco RV42 VPN router. Its power LED illuminated almost immediately. Then I ran a standard Ethernet cable from an available Ethernet port on the LAN side of my router into the single Ethernet port of that adapter. A second LED link light illuminated almost immediately to inform me of an appropriate functional Ethernet link light with the router as described in the Ethernet section of our Networking Fundamentals section. It has three LEDs, and I noticed the third one remained dark. Then I went upstairs, and I plugged the larger four-port device into another standard 115-volt AC power outlet in my computer lab. As before, its power LED illuminated almost immediately. Then I ran another standard Ethernet cable for one of my lab's nearby Ethernet switches, into one of the four Ethernet ports on that larger power line adapter. A second LED link light illuminated to confirm that that Ethernet link was working exactly as I expected. This adapter also had a third LED, but 
It remained dark, and this surprised me. I figured that third LED would illuminate to indicate a successful data link through the power line grid of my home. I waited, and waited, and waited. About 15 seconds later, that LED finally started blinking, remaining on most of the time. It looked to me like day was flowing. I guess it just takes longer than I had expected for the two power line adapters to find one another and make that link across the, across the power line connection. So I went back downstairs and I took a look at the three LEDs on the smaller device and I saw them all behaving exactly like the ones upstairs. The power LED and the Ethernet link LEDs were on continuously and that third one was on most of the time blinking a little bit. Um, looked to me like there was data flowing. Figuring that this should result in an internet connection for all of the computers and the Wi-Fi access point and all the other networked equipment connected to that big Ethernet switch in my upstairs lab, I fired up a command session at one of those computers and tried to ping Google.com as described in the network troubleshooting section here at AskMrWizard.com. No go. I was a bit dismayed to see a timeout message. I didn't have a connection. Undaunted, I, I tried a simpler test. I tried to ping the downstairs router through the power line Ethernet link, but that didn't work either. I re-verified that all the LEDs were glowing as previously expected, and I wiggled a couple of wires, but nothing happened. Nothing helped. Then I remembered something about Ethernet switches. They aren't very smart, but they do have enough memory to become confused. Now, all of this is described in a feature article about Ethernet switches in the Ethernet area of our network troubleshooting section. You can read about it. I had previously used a different kind of bridge to connect my upstairs lab with my downstairs internet connection. So I'd done this before, but I couldn't remember exactly which of my lab's ethernet switch connections I'd been using. Perhaps, I thought, maybe that ethernet switch is still remembering and trying to use its old route. It doesn't know about this new one yet. That Ethernet switch in my lab had several spare connectors, and I couldn't remember which one I'd used before. And when I'd connected the new power line bridge, I just selected one at random. Well, I just moved that connector to a different place and tested again, and it worked. Evidently, I had now found the connection that my switch was remembering for communication with my downstairs router from previous connections. I think I could just as easily have powered down the, the, the power from that Ethernet switch and powered it back up again, and it would have re-remembered and relearned all the routes as it went along. Again, as described in the networking fundamental sections here at AskMrWizard.com. Look at that section on Ethernet switches. Now, once this, section, once this system started working, it continued to work and to deliver fine, reliable Internet bandwidth. I found it to be very reliable after a few days of heavy use which is a slight improvement over the wireless Ethernet bridge that I had previously been using because it would sometimes lose its connection. You can learn a lot more about wireless Ethernet bridges in the wireless networking and advanced networking areas here at AskMrWizard.com. I really like this technology. However, I would urge caution. Do not try to take this stuff too far. Several different incompatible competing modulation techniques are used to apply and receive Ethernet data on the power lines. So there are complicated issues of interoperability if you try to mix devices from different vendors or even different generations of devices from the same vendor. As a general rule, you want to buy these devices in pairs and use them that way in pairs so that you can know that they're going to work. Unless uh, the vendor provides very clear guidance for expansion with additional devices. Overall, I'm quite pleased with the Linksys PLSK400 Power Line Network Adapter Kit in this two-node internet, internet to LAN configuration. And I think our AskMrWizard.com audience will benefit from this kind of technology. Similar products are available from D-Link, Buffalo, TrendNet, Creative, and other vendors. Thanks. We are very pleased that so many people are finding our content on YouTube. However, if you are using only YouTube to explore these clips, you're missing out on a lot of the best information. Please join us at AskMrWizard.com, where you'll find this clip, all of the related clips easily located, along with related text, illustrations, and advertisements from vendors that sell related equipment. You'll also find forums where you can ask and receive answers to your questions. Your support at our site keeps us going, and we appreciate it. Thanks.